Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. In last week's blog I've shown you five simple habits that help you to have control, power and influence whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You can read, watch or listen to last week's update if you click on the link below this video. In this week's blog I want to show you how to get peace of mind, more control, more power and more influence if your critically ill loved one is dying in intensive care. Today I want to talk about a topic that most people think it's difficult to talk about and a lot of people shy away from talking about it in the first place. For most people it's very distressing, very disturbing, hard to face, overwhelming, frustrating and talking about the topic of death of a loved one means we need to face our own vulnerability and often our own mortality. Let's start with the good news though. The good news is that death is part of life and we need to celebrate both occasions, life and death. We also need to celebrate birth and death. To be here on this planet alive is a miracle after all. The sooner we accept and also respect that death is part of life, the sooner we all have a chance to have peace of mind, more control, power and influence in those situations. The sooner we realize that death is part of life the easier it gets for us to accept that we are all mortal and that we all inevitably go in the same direction. That doesn't mean that when dealing with the inevitable such as when we are faced with the death of a loved one in intensive care that we need to quote unquote celebrate the occasion. However by looking at the situation differently and by changing the things that we can change in such a challenging situation we can achieve peace of mind in this often once in a lifetime experience. Most end of life situations in intensive care involve a fair amount of tension, drama, discussions and fighting for and holding on to life. And that's good news. We don't want to waste a precious life and we don't want to stop or limit treatment on someone who has a chance to live. However, what about the situations where death of your critically ill loved one is inevitable and where death is imminent? That's a great question to ask and first of all let's establish that generally speaking 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care who are dealing with an end of life situation of their loved one feel like they have no control, no power and no influence let alone peace of mind. Those families feel like the very life of their critically ill loved one is slipping through their fingers and there's nothing they can do about it. Those families feel overwhelmed, frustrated and they very rarely ask the most important question in those often once in a lifetime situations which is how can I have peace of mind, more control, more power and more influence in an end of life situation. At the end of the day the end of life situation that you and your family are dealing with is unique and it's also a once in a lifetime situation. You don't want to get it wrong and you don't want to leave the end of life situation and the death of your critically ill loved one in intensive care with a bitter taste in your mouth and without peace of mind. You also don't want to make the wrong decisions and you certainly don't want to be at the mercy of the intensive care team. The reality and the fact of the matter is that if you and your family have been told that your critically ill loved one is going to die, your world is falling apart and you feel once again without power, without control and without any influence whatsoever. Peace of mind is not even on your radar. Before I go on about how you can have more control, more power, more influence and peace of mind in an end of life situation, I hope that you and your family have done your own independent research and you also have made up your own mind whether the intensive care team is telling you the truth 
about whether death is the only perceived option for your critically ill loved one and that there is nothing else that the intensive care team or you and your family can do. If you are unclear, confused or in doubt whether the intensive care team is telling you the truth, check out these articles below so that you can gather more information, wisdom and insight and also gain more control, power and influence in your challenging and difficult situation. The reality is that the intensive care team may not have told you the truth and they may simply press forward with their agenda by simply telling you that your critically ill loved one is going to die. So why would the intensive care team have an agenda? I'm glad you've asked. There are so many things happening behind the scenes in intensive care that you simply have no idea about and it's critical that you quickly educate yourself about what's happening behind the scenes in intensive care. Because the intensive care team may simply position your critically ill loved one's prognosis and diagnosis depending on what's happening behind the scenes and also depending on their interests and those interests may not necessarily depend on the clinical facts and they may depend more on things like the financial interests, the research interests, the bed status and bed pressures in intensive care, as well as the internal politics, power play, the intrigue and the psychology in intensive care. In order to do your own research and in order to get that critical behind the scenes view and insights, you have certainly come to the right place at intensivecarehotline.com. Check out our free articles on our blog and on our Your Questions Answered section for tips, strategies and for what's happening behind the scenes. Those sections will help you to make up your own mind whilst looking behind the scenes in intensive care. If you have come to the conclusion that your critically ill loved one is inevitably dying, you know you now do want to have peace of mind, control, power and influence because you and your family should be directing and orchestrating the end-of-life situation of your loved one. Most intensive care units, however, don't want to give you control, power and influence and they don't want you to interfere in their decision-making process even in an end-of-life situation. After all, the intensive care team, quote-unquote, knows best. The unfortunate reality is that I have seen far too many end-of-life situations in intensive care where an end-of-life situation has been called far too prematurely by the intensive care team and where families haven't been told the truth and where a withdrawal of life support has been suggested prematurely by the intensive care team because of the many competing interests in intensive care. The next step then often involves the timing of the end-of-life situation. Here, once again, the intensive care team then often wants to have the bed empty as quickly as possible because the next admission is not far away. The intensive care team will also have in mind the massive costs for an intensive care bed and they therefore want to have an empty bed as quickly as possible. But what about your and your family's needs? Do you think that your and your family's, family's needs are met if an end-of-life situation is rushed or hastened? Do you think that if your critically ill loved one is in an end-of-life situation that you should have some input? I have seen many end-of-life situations in intensive care where death has been rushed for many reasons but mainly to suit the intensive care team's agenda and mainly to suit their needs rather than looking at your and your family's needs and your peace of mind. Most families of critically ill patients in intensive care don't ask how they want to have the end-of-life situation of their loved one to look like. They often assume that the intensive care team quote-unquote knows best. But you need to always be involved in the decision-making process, irrespective of the situation you are facing and don't be intimidated by the intensive care team's perceived power. In more than 15 years intensive care nursing in three different countries, I have found that if you leave the decision-making to the intensive care team in end-of-life situation, 
you'd be pretty disappointed and you may well live with bitter feelings and anger rather than with peace of mind. Here are some action steps that will help you to achieve more peace of mind, control, power and influence in an end-of-life situation. Have you thought about asking for more time in the end-of-life situation? Maybe you and your family need another 48 to 72 hours to come to terms with losing your critically ill loved one. Have you thought about whether there are any key people that may want to see your dying loved one, such as relatives coming in from overseas or interstate? Think about how the intensive care team can provide a private and dignified end-of-life situation for you, for your family and your critically ill loved one and simply ask for it. Don't let a limited mindset of the intensive care team hold you back. Just because the intensive care team says something can't be done or can't be organized doesn't mean that they really can't. You just need to keep asking for it and you just can't take no for an answer. Next, is your critically ill loved one in a quiet and peaceful area in the intensive care unit? Does your critically ill loved one and your family need a quiet side room for their final hours? Are there any religious, spiritual and or cultural things that you and your family want? Next, is there anything else that you want in this end of life situation that would help you and your family to get peace of mind? Also. Do you and your family want to be at the bedside at the time of death or would you rather not be present during the time of death? Also take into consideration, do you want your critically ill loved one to die at home? Again, I have seen many families who would have wished for their loved one to go home and approach their end of life at home. Some countries have adopted these practices and in Germany Austria, Switzerland and in Australia some patients can approach their end of life in their own home. Check out intensivecareathome.com.au for more information. Once again, and I can't stress it enough, is your critically ill loved one really dying or is the intensive care team quote unquote selling to you that death is the only option? You and your family are far more powerful than you think you are. Don't let the intensive care team put pressure on you by them saying by 10 p.m. tonight we're going to stop treatment. Don't assume that they hold all the decision-making power. They certainly do hold all the decision-making power if you let them. If you want to have peace of mind, control, power and influence in an end-of-life situation you need to make that clear to the intensive care team and you need to ask for what you want. Once again in more than 15 years intensive care nursing in three different countries I have found that if you and your family can direct the end-of-life situation you will have peace of mind, control, power and influence. Just because your critically ill loved one is in a busy and noisy intensive care unit doesn't mean that the intensive care unit can't organize a quiet and peaceful side room for your critically ill loved one and for you. You certainly don't want to be exposed in a busy intensive care unit during such a private and hopefully dignified situation. And also, just because your critically ill loved one is in intensive care doesn't mean that they can't go home during their final days or weeks. Once again, check out intensivecareathome.com.au for more information. If you keep asking for the things that you want and don't be shy to do so and don't be intimidated by the intensive care team's perceived power, you will have peace of mind, control, power and influence. How can you further leverage your level of power, influence and control whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? And how can you be in control of the situation? You will get to that all-important feeling of power, control and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. 
In your free Instant Impact Report, you learn quickly how to get real power and real control and how you can influence decision-making fast, whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free Instant Impact Report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free Instant Impact Report by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control, power and influence in your situation. Also, how to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our Your Questions Answered section where we answer your questions or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.